stress, fear, depression, spiritual warfare. Are you weighted down? Do you need refreshing? Welcome, welcome everyone to the Warriors for Christ podcast, where we seek to uplift, edify, and encourage you to be light and salt in a dark and tasteless world with your host, Kyle. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Warriors for Christ podcast. I'm Kyle. And I'm Sam. And today we are having a special guest joining us. Yeah, uh, and the guest is uh, Charity. Charity, how are you doing today? Great. How are you guys doing? Well, we're doing good. We uh, we just finished uh, a podcast on uh, vain worship and how to make sure we aren't having vain worship. And, and now we get to uh, talk and we're going to have a conversation as a follow-up uh, with your testimony. Uh, many people heard your testimony uh, several months ago, you know, kind of last late um, summer. When uh, God did a wonderful, impossible work. Do um, you remember that when we uh, we talked about a work that God does, how he frees us from sin? And do you remember when you first heard it again, you, you were kind of wondering, like, oh, gee, what if I, I don't make it a single day? Do you remember those yes. thoughts? Oh, yeah, definitely. I do remember those. And, you know, looking back now... I think, wow, how how did I ever think that way, you know? I mean, I feel like my, you know, faith just grows stronger each day, and, and uh, man, I'm an overcomer, you know, and it's only through, it's only through you know, his spirit um, leading me um, day by day that that's able to happen and to be dead to... Um, dead to the flesh, dead to myself. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there. I, looking back, I, I think, wow, that is just amazing. I have overcome and I have conquered um, through many, many um, situations with other people and talking to them and, and just growing my faith and, and the spirit leading and, and working through me. Um where at the beginning I just thought there's no way that that could ever happen. I just know myself, and I know I wouldn't even I wouldn't even be able to make it a day. And now it's like, I mean, when they say the yoke is easy, the yoke is easy, and the spirit leads you, and um, it's just incredible. So, um, and yeah. that, that's a good reflection that you had because again, it's ourselves. There's no way. Until God does the impossible work, we can't even comprehend it. It's just, it's it's impossible. But yet that's what God promises to do is an impossible work. What's impossible, man, is, is possible with God. And, and that is what God does. And so now, yeah, as you look back on your life, it's like, wow, this it truly is amazing. And it's not trying. I mean, Charity, how, how often before would you try in, in praying like, oh, God, I, I don't want to have an outburst. Or I don't want to do this. And, and you would, did you? And did you not have a desire that you wanted to overcome sin, that you didn't mm-hmm. want to keep having some of those struggles that you would have, or maybe you'd lose your temper, or you would say something that you would regret? Yeah, absolutely. There were, you know, every day I was praying, and many times a day, and I would be like, okay, it would work for a little bit, or then it wouldn't work, and I'd be like, man, what is wrong with me? How come I can't just, like, control my emotions? Why do I have all these outburst and I get so angry, like so volatile, like so like enraged. I would get you know, and now that never never once. Never once. And that's like since I don't know, so I don't you know, know August, peace. September. Um, so yeah, it's just you know, and I think about um as I read through and an and impossible work. Like I was reading the other day, I think it was in Matthew or I, I know Mark, and I think in Matthew it talks about how, um, put it down somewhere, but it says in Mark how um, with people it's not it's, it's not possible, right? But with God, all things uh, are possible, and He can do the impossible within us um, That's right. through Him. It can't be through men or through people at all, but in him it can be. And, and you know, that in a 
it's not just in Mark. Um, I think it was in Matthew as well that it talks about that. Um, at least two places, if not three, where it talks about with men, it's not possible. But with God, all things are impossible. And I just, it just goes to show you that, you know, when you talk with your friends and they say, no, there's no way. You can't live a holy life. That's, that's totally impossible. You can't walk as Jesus walked. That, that never happens. He doesn't change you until, you know, um, the day of judgment. And, you know, I thought that. I completely um, was taught that, too. I thought that as well. But if you truly, truly read the Bible, you are going to read that, uh-uh, oh, my gosh, I was wrong all these years. Because no one reads their Bible. And, you know, um, I just, in fact, I just read my Bible for the first time front, or um, the New Testament front to cover, cover, you know, front to cover, cover to back, um, on my own. Not through Bible studies or Zooms or anything like that, but on my own, um, which I had never done before when I was, uh, you know, quote-unquote Christian before growing up. So... Um, I am just like learning so much more about how, you know, you have to receive the Holy Spirit in your life. You have to. Um, and just, it is a hope until the end. It's a hope of salvation. It's a hope of eternal life. You do have to endure to the end. You do have to continue. Um, and it has to be a faith, not just a faith, but and not just a belief, but it has to be in truth, accordance to God's knowledge, not man's. And so I'm just learning so much. And um, can I read something? Sure. Um, can I? Okay. Um, so I have been, for those of you who are listening, I have been reading um, this Smith Wigglesworth book. And, oh, my, there's just so much. I mean, talk about filling, filling the Holy Spirit just uh, filling you to the full, like your blood tank is overflowing. Um, there's one, there's, um, I want to read this about the Holy Spirit, because some people have no idea, like me, I had no idea what the Holy Spirit does and how, oh my gosh, just went through you, that, you know, that person receives. Um, but it says, um, Tidal waves of blessing come as the Holy Spirit has his way in these human bodies and produces an eternal working. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a new plane of covering with the divine presence, a power burning in our very bones. Um, and then it says, um, I want to read this part. There is a wonderful unctioning force when all the people of God baptized with the Holy Spirit come together. Oh, this is a this longing cry in the hearts of the people that cannot be satisfied, but with more of God. Um, and then it talks about the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not only the great essential power for victorious life and service, it is a separating force. Oftentimes, Jesus said, a man's foe should be oftentimes those of his own household. That's from Matthew 10, 36. It means separation as sure as you live if you follow the narrow way that leadeth unto life. It means persecution, but if you follow holy, you will have no room for anything but Jesus. Bound in the Spirit, on and on and on, over and over. But on another side, the world narrows up to you. There are thousands of quote-unquote believers, which meanwhile do not see the need of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's so true. I, I'm seeing this all the time. So in the first place, the old company has no room for you. But in the second place, the Holy Spirit binds you. You have no room, only to go the way of the Spirit in conformity to the will of God. You are bound to go the narrow way. I have never seen the Holy Spirit change his position, simplicity in living, non-conformity to the world. You will not find God begin in the Spirit and leading back to the flesh. That won't happen. Um, you will have no liberty to go back. If you want to turn back, ask yourself, where, where are you going? What does Paul say? 
to go bound in the spirit and to Jerusalem's bounds, afflictions. None of these things move me, neither I, neither count I my life dear unto myself, that I might finish my course with joy and ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. The way, the way of the cross, separation from the flesh, non-conformity to the world. But with an ever-deepening and enlarging in that abounding fullness of life that dwells in the throne of God. So anyway, um, you know, I have read this before, but I was, you know, going through again, and I thought, oh my gosh, I really want to share this, because, you know, it's so true, and I speak with so many friends, um, you know, I've spoken with over 20 friends now, and, and they just don't understand that um, they think that they can continue living for God, having a zeal for God, that they don't need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and, and you definitely do. And um, well, I'd so, say most yeah, of your friends I mean, probably think they have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. They probably just don't know what God says the result is. Right. Yeah, exactly. I would agree with that. Um, they they truly believe. Um, in fact, just recently I've, I've had a couple of friends, um, I've asked them, and they said, oh, yeah, I've received the Holy Spirit. Um, he, he does live in me. You know, but they, they truly don't know that that means you are living a holy life before God. You know, you are walking as Jesus walks. There is... Um, no deceit in your mouth, you are, um, yeah, truly, you know, and it, it makes me think of that um, verse in the Bible that talks about, you know, a lot of people had a zeal for God, but it wasn't in accordance with true knowledge, it says something like that, I don't know, somewhere in the New Testament, I think it's like in Ephesians or Galatians, but um, yeah, I just... Um, they're seeking and they're worshiping God and, and, and they're seeking him every day. But the difference is they truly don't, they've never been baptized by the Holy Spirit and they don't understand that God, he has, he, what is the word I'm looking for? He wants us to walk in obedience, not wants to, he commands us to walk in obedience and to obey his commandments. And that is to be holy as he is holy, to walk as Jesus walked. He's our example, you know, where it talks about in First Peter and Second Peter, he's our example to, for us. We are to walk as he is, you know, to walk. And, and they'll be like, no, no, because I'm possible. You're right. In Mark 10, 27, it does say, um, you know, it, it is, it's impossible with people, but with God, everything, all things are possible. And, and that's what people... They read different parts, and they just say, no, this is what it says here. And I said, yeah, but you can't read all of it. You have to read the whole context. And, you know, I understand where they're coming from because that was total me my whole entire life. I just would pick and choose whatever. And God says, no, you have to follow my ways, and this is this, these are my commandments. You can't, you know, you can't make up your own narrative and follow it that way. Yep. So, yeah. And I think a lot of it is. Um, what the people don't understand is they only have half the truth in their mind. They understand that Jesus came and died for the forgiveness of their sin and also died for the payment of the penalty of sin. But the most important thing that they don't understand is God requires a separation and holiness, and Jesus died also to then take away the sin, to have the sin removed from the heart, to receive a new heart so that we have new desires, so that the sinful Mm -hmm. thoughts that used to dwell within us that would wage war against our soul have been removed, and only God can do that. And and that's why people can never overcome. They desperately want to overcome. Uh, they desire God. They seek God. We talked about a lot of this in the episode we just did on, unfortunately, people who have a vain worship because they have never received truly the power of God. Uh, now, Charity, as you were discussing, you mentioned that, you know, God freed you from sin, mm-hmm. and you're able yep. to live freedom from that. Not not only did he remove the sinful thoughts and the desires in your heart that was the 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 birthplace of of you know the manifestation of sin in your body coming from your heart, but God also as he's 
worked in you. He changed your desire for things of the world. I, I mean, you used to right. love doing things and pursuing the, the hanging out with the enjoyment of fellowship with friends to, to, to play games, to do this, to go on vacation, to enjoy entertainment. Has, has right. any of that changed or is, is, is it still, nope, my desire is still God in my heart. Those things don't have the control over me like I used to. I mean, how, what would you say? To yeah. That? Yeah, absolutely. Um, he does. When he when he changes you, you are a new creation in Christ. And um, you know, just like it talks about in Gal- Galatians, your desires change. You are, you know, um, I have. I used to um, be so caught up in the world and living a life of idolatry. I was probably. You know, picture of me and that man just right there living for the world, all the pleasures and all the fun, 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 friends, friends, vacations, vacations. Um, you know, and it's definitely changed. Absolutely. God changes you from the inside out and he, um, removes all that, changes your desires. And, um, I don't have those desires anymore that I used to have. Um, you know, we, our family might go on a vacation here or there, but it's not like I have to be always, when's the next vacation? When are we doing that? When are we going here? Let's play this, which I used to always be, and it's definitely not like that. I would say, you know, my life now outside of work is, you know, really meditating and seeking God and gives me that desire to just, um, read his word and study his word and, um, you know, talk with others and, and try to, um, you know, plant seeds and, and really that's my desire and that's my life now, which is totally different than, um, it used to be. Um, hey, so Jared. yeah, and, and just you know, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, now that things have changed for you, have you experienced any persecution among the people that used to call themselves your friends? Yeah, I mean, I had, I've had, um, you know, one friend got to the point where she just did not want to hang out with me at all because I was, whenever we got together, it was God, 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 did you know about this or that? Or God can change your heart. You know, it's all, it's our hearts, it's our thoughts, it's our thoughts, you know. Um, the Holy Spirit um, wants to do a huge work in your life. You know, he can do so, you know, if you just let him, instead of just being limited, I would, you know, just always, I, I always wanted to, you know, I always want to share with people. And so she got to the point where, you know, she told me, hey, I, I don't want to hang out with you anymore, or let's hang out, but let's not talk about God. So God is our number one in our life. Um, I, let's set that aside and still hang out, but not talk about it because I was overbearing, I guess. And so then, you know, I had to tell her that, well, sorry, um, God is number one in my life. And I guess if that's how you feel, um, I guess we're going to have to cut ties then. And so that's what happened. And of course, it's happened with a ton of people, you know, so many, like they just, I try to reach out, reach out, or whenever we get together, or we used to get together with families, and it hasn't happened, and like. So have you noticed that um, many of the people that used to invite you over and call you to do things, and all of a sudden, the calls just stopped happening, you aren't getting invited over, it's like you're excluded? Now, just for context, too, these are all people, friends, families who would claim to be Christians. Is that not true? Right? We aren't talking about just the world. No, we're not talking about the world. I, I'm Although saying God would the majority, say the Yeah, I'm saying the majority of these are probably 90% are quote-unquote Christians who are living for God and um, yeah, they claim to seek Him and, and desire Him and worship Him in spirit and truth. And they would say that I am a false Christian and I don't, I'm being kind of like brainwashed and stuff, which, you know, you say what you want, but I know the truth, and I read my Bible every day, and that's where I get the real truth, the true knowledge. I mean, if you read over and over, it talks about 
the truth, you know, the true knowledge or the knowledge of the truth. It, and I, when I read, I think, man, that's so interesting because it's not just saying the knowledge, it's saying the true knowledge. Like people have knowledge, but it's not God's true knowledge. Um, and they're being deceived and they are in such, um, they're, they're in such a lie that, you know, but they would never say that. They'd say that I am the one. So yeah, they are kind of cutting me off saying, you don't know what you're talking to and they don't, they don't want to discuss it. Like if I ask a question, they just, they have no examples. They don't have, yeah, it's very, um, um, just one of the things. One of the things I want to just add for context for some people who maybe haven't heard or know. Um, a lot of times when God speaks, He speaks of sin, and it almost seems like God speaks so harsh that most people think, "Oh yeah, I'm not that person. I'm, I'm not an idolater. I'm not a bird." Mm-hmm. You know, you mentioned earlier yeah, your yeah. life of, "Oh, I was an idolater as this," and most people are like, "Oh yeah, I'm not like her." Well, for context, for people to understand. It, God completely changes the way you see yourself or the way you used to see yourself when he changes you. For example, you know, uh, charity for you, 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 um, grew up in a Christian home. You sought to serve God your whole life. You read your Bible. You prayed. You were involved in Bible study groups. You served in the church. You were involved at times with, uh, youth group ministry. You also went yeah. on many mission trips. You went to yeah. South America. Okay. You went to different places. You yeah, uh, sought to devote right. your life to God. So just yep. to give people context, when, when you say, oh, I was a, I was a, you know, a, a, an idolater and this and that, it's, it's how you now see yourself with the new eyes. You're like, oh my goodness, all those things that God talks about the world, that was me. But yet most people who knew you would have said, oh no, no, no charity is a, she's a servant of God. She's a sweet young woman. Uh, you know, you've, had ex- yeah. conversations with with yeah. relatives, right? Who you told them, oh no, I I, I was a I was yeah, a terrible center, right. and they're like, oh no no, that's not you, Jerry. no no no. <laughs> yeah, they did say so that. I want to right. give that context to people because some people don't understand. Um, they're yeah. like, Oh yeah, that's not me. But when God changes you, you see how God sees the world, and like, yep, that's the whole world. Yeah, how horrible and filthy and living for yourself. Um. And yeah, like before, you know, quote unquote, when I would, thought I was a Christian, I would have, when I read my Bible and stuff, I thought in serving God, I would think when I would read about, you know, um, when it talks about, you know, you're ungodly or you have wickedness in your life, um, to me, I, I, I would read that and go, Oh, well, I don't have wickedness or I, I'm not ungodly because in my mind, ungodly or wickedness were people who were, you know, going out and having affairs or going out and, you know, um, murdering people or, you know, going to jail or breaking the law, you know, that kind of thing. That's how I would kind of, um, think about that. And now it's, I think, yeah, so differently. Like God completely, his spirit changes your thoughts, your desires. You are truly a new creation in Christ. And, you know, when you talk about the tree, the good tree and the bad tree, I always would read that too. And, you know, I would always kind of would just have your own narrative of what you thought. But, you know, a good tree can only bear good fruit. Well, good fruit, there's no sin, none. So if you're still sinning, sorry, you are a bad tree. And people would be like, no way, no way. But it's so true. Exactly, it sounds exactly like what I had learned when I had finally questioned. Um, because I came to the realization right towards... Probably more just now, over more than a year ago, that I now understand what it means to be truly indwelled with the Spirit of God, allowing Him to be Lord of my life. I, I in in a nominal sense, like for 47 years, I called myself a Christian. I went to church. I took my family there. I raised my daughter in that, and yet I still had sinful thoughts. They they dominated 
in in the quiet time in my own life. And and I just think it's such a beautiful thing now to be free. Yeah. Amen. And one of the other things, Charity, that uh, you know I, I want to point out is, is some people get confused with sanctification being a process or event. As you've experienced, I've experienced, and many others have experienced, sanctification is an event. God removes the sin out of you. He gives you a new heart immediately. He doesn't give you a half yeah. heart, a progressive heart. He does it. Yeah. Now, on the same point, exactly. there's still a growing in, the, in, in, in things of God. There's, there's the faith being strengthened. And... You know, you, just as you look at Jesus and you read the passage, it talked about Jesus continued to grow in wisdom of God. Now, he wasn't decreasing in sin. He, he was he was pure. He was free of it. He didn't live in sin. But he was still growing in the things of God. And, and that's something I think, you know, even me today, you, uh, we continue to grow in the things of God. Now, now, one of the things I wanted to bring up, too, um, you look at the power of God. Obviously, you you've experienced the power of God. And it's the one blessing and the promise that God promises to all people who come come into uh, faith with Christ and receive the grace and all the fullness of God is is the new heart and the freedom from sin. That is common to everybody. But we know that there's other powers and blessings of God. Uh, We know that there's healings in this. Um, I know we've had a couple of opportunities. Can can you share some things in your life where previously, well, let me just ask, had you ever experienced any supernatural healing in your life? Like, Immediately, just yeah. bam, you were yeah. healed before before you came before God changed your heart. Yeah, absolutely. What, so, what are some examples of that? Well, um, as you know, once you know, once I came into the real true knowledge of faith and put all my complete faith in Him um, and having reliance on God, um, I and through the body of Christ, I. Um, there's been a couple of times where I've been sick and, you know, I, I am like weak and sick and I feel bad. And so I check my temperature. It's like, you know, 101 or whatever. And then I'm like, okay, I am going to call. So I called you and I said, Sam, can you pray for me right now? And so you prayed, you know, in the name of Jesus, you prayed over me and Right after we got off the phone, like two seconds later, immediately, boom, I was free of all that sickness. It went away. Um, I checked my Ben, Benner, I think it was Ben who checked my temperature. And sure enough, I'm like at 98 and I'm feeling better already. And Ben was kind of like, what in the world? Like, what? Like, he couldn't deny that it was. It was totally God. It was totally a, a huge deliverance of, you know, my sickness went away. I mean, I was feeling so sick and so weak. And then, you know, a minute later, boom, I'm, I'm completely fine. And then, um, you know, just that power. I mean, there's power in, in um, the name of Jesus. And then that, um, another time, Bennett, you know, was feeling really sick and everything. And, um I remember right away I called you and I said, hey, Bennett's feeling, you know, horrible. He has a headache. He feels like he's going to throw up. And I said, would you please pray for him right now? You um, prayed for him over the phone. You know, I laid hands on him. And he was healed right away, immediately, instantly. So, you know, there is power in the name of Jesus and the true knowledge of God and, and um, yeah, just being a new creation. And, being able to, you know, um, partake of that for sure. So, and and still, I'm still in awe every day when I'm like, oh my gosh, God, I have truly been delivered and set free from all my sins. And I think even now people are like, what? Still? Are you sure? So you still have never son? I'm like, no. And sometimes I'm like, thinking to myself, wow, this is so amazing, like crazy amazing. And I just, I mean, it's too hard for people to truly understand. You really, I mean, it is it is a power of God that could never be done in your own, in your own flesh, you know. Oh, yeah. You're still living in the flesh, obviously, you know, you might go a day or two here, but you can never overcome. You'll never be able to overcome unless you have 
you know, the spirit in your life and you receive it and you get a new heart and yep. you walk in it and it's a different life and why people wouldn't be changed or why they wouldn't want that. I mean, I, I don't, I don't understand why they wouldn't want that. Maybe I, I, well, I have talked with, you know, another friend said it just seems too burdensome. It seems too much. Like I wouldn't be able to do it. That's what she told me. But actually, it's quite the opposite. It's it's freeing. It's freedom. It's it's ah, it's amazing. Yep. So I mean, you truly don't know until you just dive in, and that's what I had to do because I kept having doubt at the beginning too. I just had so much doubt, and you know, then I finally came came to God and just ah, I had to seek with. And it says you seek with all your heart, mind, and soul and strength. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yes. And I also, um, while I was reading um, as well, um, I did want to share, you know, um, another verse that's kind of like that, that resonated with me was John 7:38, where it talks about, um, he who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being, innermost being, will flow rivers of living water. And then, you know, verse 39 goes on to say that he he speaks of the Spirit, those who believed in him, you know, would receive and everything. But I just thought, man, from his, see, it has to be your innermost being. You can seek it for a little bit. You can want it a little bit. But you have to, it has to be your whole being, your whole entity, your whole innermost being. You know, and I thought, oh my gosh, John seven thirty eight is great too because it's another verse that just <clears throat> just talks about how you you've got to want it. Like you can't just say, oh, I have this emotion this day and this feeling, and I want it for a week or whatever. Like it's yeah, it's like that burning passion. Well, and it's like it's like what God says when He says you have to seek Me with all your heart, all your mind. Yeah. In all your strength. He doesn't say, seek me with half of it and you'll find it. It's like the hidden treasure. You find a hidden exactly. treasure, you go bury it. You sell all that you have to go buy the field to get the hidden treasure. You aren't half mm-hmm. committed. You aren't fractionally committed. You're wholly committed. You're wholly, um, yeah, now, totally just to back up to clarify one thing. Earlier when I asked yeah. you about the power of God, what, what I meant to say in the beginning was before you truly understood the power of God, and the new heart and God could free you. And before, you know, you got that, had you ever experienced in your old Christian life, the power of God and healings like you have now? No, never. Uh-uh, never. That's right. I never did either. And it's amazing when you look at the, the power of God and the healing, because it, it's, it, it truly is. It's, it's not a praying and like an asking, it's a commanding and it's a, it's an expectation of, God's going to do it. He takes care of his children. And there's been yeah, numerous and people. He, and he does it. It's so, I know. Uh, it's so, ah, uh, it's I like, oh healing. my gosh, I'm living in this. It's not like a, it's not like a Superman, you know, whatever. It's like, this is real. These are the attributes that one has, is, that you have and you experience when you are a new creation. And you can't tell me that all these quote unquote Christians, you might have an experience that happens one time, but it's not over and over and over and over, and it's not, you know, from from the Holy. Well, I mean, from the Holy Spirit, but I mean, it's just over and over and over that God delivers you. Yep, and and again, it's kind of like uh, you know Mark, Mark chapter sixteen when it when it talked about. Um, uh, he who has believed and been baptized shall be saved, but he who has disbelieved shall be then. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they'll cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents. If they drink deadly poison, will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. And and again, it, it's not a it's not a, a, a praying and say, oh God, please do this. It's a commanding. Um, it's an authority that has been granted. It's a commanding of the sickness to be gone, to be rise up, and, and to be healed. And it is, and, and there's no barriers with God in 
his spirit, whether it's in person and, and God's uh, given me opportunity to, to pray for people and heal them in person immediately. Also over the phone, whether it's in the yeah. continental United States as well as in Africa, where we prayed for people in Africa. And next yeah. week we'll, we'll be doing a, a testimony with Daniel uh, Okanga from Kenya, and he'll be given an, uh, you know, get a chance to share all the wonderful work and the power of God that's at work in Kenya. But it yeah. is it is a, a wonderful thing. God, God's power. It's instantaneous. It's like, bam, um, not a, hey, yeah, go rest. And, and maybe in a couple of days or a week, you'll feel better. It's bam. Immediate. Yeah, it's immediate. And um, also, I wanted to add that um, my prayer life is completely night and day um, since I've gotten a new heart. It is. Oh, it, it, it's so uplifting. I never ever have prayed like, Lord, please help me, you know, take away this sin or you know, help me to yell or help me. I don't even pray like that anymore. It's like your prayers are so powerful. They're, they're for, you know, lifting up others to seek you, to come to, to come to him, you know, to come to God, um, or, you know, praying for, um, other people in the body, you know, praying for them that, you know, um, seeking different things that, um, you know, you're praying for. for them. Yeah, it's like it's your like, your whole focus is the growing the kingdom. Or, yeah. And it's, it's no heaven, longer yourself it's because Jesus already took care of that when you put your faith in what God wants you to put your faith in. All that's removed. Yeah. You're no longer fighting the battle within you. You're fighting the battle around you. Amen. Yeah, it's a spiritual battle now. It's not, yeah, you said it really well. Sometimes I can't. Yeah. Exactly. And it's not, yeah, it's not of the flesh and it's not all about you and narcissistic. It's more everything, everything, your prayer is, um, heavenward. You know, it's all for God's glory. It's for, it's nothing for you, you know, and it's such, it's so different because it, it's a different way of praying that I've never prayed before, and it's it, it's powerful. So, Amen. Yeah. Um, well, Sherry, it's been a wonderful time in just sharing, you know, the things of what God has done in your life and continues to use you for the kingdom. Now, as a holy vessel, walking in pure light and being able to serve God. Um, anything else uh, that comes to mind before we close that you want to share with anyone listening? that God may be putting on your heart right now? You know, I just I just pray for those who are seeking and know that, oh my gosh, I am missing something. There is something missing. And, you know, they want, they want so badly to come to him and receive his fullness, everything that God has to offer through his spirit. And I just pray that they don't, they don't just keep pushing it away, but that, you know, and how in the Bible it says the time of salvation is now. Today is the day. You know, don't don't prolong it because I do have some friends who are who are searching and and they are prolonging it, and it's never ever going to happen if you don't. Today is the day of salvation. So if that's you and you are listening right now. Oh, I just pray for you. I just pray you just need to receive the Spirit. Don't fucking done. I was doing that so much and was doubting, doubting. He can't do an impossible work in my life. I believe that he could He could do an impossible work in other people's lives. I never, ever doubted that. But when it came to my life, I just thought, I don't know that he can do that. And, and, and then I thought, okay, he can, but I still doubted. And he knew my heart that I was still doubting. So it took a couple of times, but I would just say, come to him right now. Today is the day to receive salvation. And if you are searching and you don't know, you just need to search with your whole being. Everything is in you. I mean, the gate is wide, but those who walk in it, it's very narrow and hardly any people find it. And I just pray for you right now. I pray that you stop whatever you're doing and that you would really come to God and, and become a new creature and receive the power of God that he has for you in a, in a new way of living and, and uh, 
just the freedom. It's it's an easy yoke. You will not ever, ever be disappointed in God. Never, ever, never in the spirit. So, yeah, I would encourage that. Al, do you have anything uh, that you wanted to share before we close? No, I, I just wanted to echo that it is my prayer right now that everyone is listening, uh, that they just, yeah. in the humility of their own heart and the presence of uh-huh. God, to just yeah. ask and receive the Holy Ghost, uh-huh. that the yeah. Lord pour his spirit out on them, that they receive the Holy Ghost, that they become empowered as a vessel of the Lord, a holy and clean vessel, and that yeah. through their life, they will work miracles, signs, and wonders that their entire mm-hmm. life will be changed and transformed in the name mm-hmm. of Jesus. Amen. Father, yeah. we, th- we just thank you, O oh God, and, and we do lift up everyone who's listening. And Father, I pray that your truth would go forth and they would trust in the power of God and the almighty work that you do to cleanse people from all sin, from all unrighteousness, make them a holy mm-hmm. vessel. Father, as you tell us in your word, the firm foundation of God, the the seal of the firm foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his, and everyone who names the name of the Lord is to abstain from all wickedness. Mm -hmm. Father, we know that in a a house there's many vessels, some of gold and silver and some of wood and earthenware, some for honor and some for dishonor. But when we are fully sanctified, a holy vessel, Set aside, we can be used for the master's purpose. It is you, O oh God, who gives us a new heart. You, O oh God, who cleanses us. You, O oh God, who makes us holy so that we can be holy as you are holy. In faith, yeah. O oh God, I pray that your spirit would move and work in the hearts of people today. Free them, O oh God. Set them free, just as your son Jesus said. Yeah. Set them free from sin. The one who commits sin is a slave of sin. They don't get to remain in the house. Set them free, O oh God. Let them yeah. put their faith in you do the impossible work, and Father, free your children. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We hope this weekly program helped rekindle your zeal to know, love, and serve Christ day by day. If you enjoyed the program, consider subscribing and sharing with your friends. Thanks for listening.